My name is Outsider2522 and welcome to another Eidolon video. Today we're going to be looking into sneaking, okay? Probably what I would say is the most complicated skill of World 6. Let's talk about it. Okay, so I've been listening to community feedback and a few people have said that when people said that my cuts were too long, they didn't mean that they wanted me to do a long form speech, but rather that I was fading between speeches too quickly, so uh, too slowly. So I'm going to try and change that this time. Um, also, if I appear as a floating head, I apologise. Green hoodie was probably not the right decision to make, but I'm in it now, so let's go with it. As always, please um, feel free to like, share and subscribe. The channel is over a thousand subscribers now, which is fantastic. Um, I, I didn't really ever think we were going to hit this goal. Couldn't have done it without you guys. I'm flabbergasted. Like, it is amazing. You guys have done such an amazing job. I can't thank you enough. And always, you know, if you do have questions or anything like that, please feel free to jump into the Discord. The link is below. It's a great growing community. There are tons of endgame players in there who can give you help if you need it. Let's get into the video. Okay, so this video is going to be a bit strange because uh, I started recording it and doing the vocals for it and editing it on Friday morning. Lava then dropped an update to sneak in Friday evening when I went to bed. So um, there's new information out that means I've got to re-record some bits, add some extra info in. So uh, just bear with me. Okay, so sneaking. I, I I touched on it ever so slightly at the very beginning um, when I did the World 6 Tips and Hints video. However, let's go over it a bit more. What is sneaking? In essence, sneaking at the moment is a pagoda. Okay, the pagoda has nine levels to it, I believe. Um, and on each level, you're basically going to be able to unlock a new, what they call ninja clone, which is a basically a toon. Okay, similar to what you normally have. For every character you've got unlocked, you can find one inside the pagoda. Now... Sneaking has its own set of stats, namely a sneaking stat, which is how likely you are to be detected. As you go up the levels, it becomes increasingly difficult to, um, to not be detected. You have a detection uh, value, and with that, you know, the closer you are to 0%, the less likely you are to be knocked out. If you do get knocked out, that toon becomes unconscious for a certain amount of time. There are upgrades later on that can mitigate that, but we'll talk about that when we reach that point of the video. So the basics are that, okay? You're gonna go up the pagoda, get increasingly better gear that's gonna help you progress further. Now, the gear slots work in, there's four gear slots, they work in a particular way. So the first one is a hat. This is purely cosmetic. It does nothing for your stats. The second one is a weapon. There are two types of weapon in this, a kunai and a nunchaku. Okay, the nunchaku is used to break down doors and go up to higher levels in the pagoda. The kunai is used for untying new ninja clones. So you will need to upgrade both of them. However, if you don't have them fully upgraded, you're just gonna take longer to get to the next stage. The last two items are sort of like support items. Now. There are various different support items in the game. However, I'm going to show you which ones are the best or which ones I believe to be the best at this moment. Okay, so they're the four items. Now, there are a, another type of item similar to the golden foods that you get in the normal game. You can get golden items in here. And what they do is they give various boosts throughout the mode, but they have to be held in your inventory. So you kind of just get the best one you can, trash everything else, and you leave them there to do their thing. Now, the way that the rewards work in here is you have what I'm gonna call a cycle, okay? Um, it starts off, I believe, at one hour. However, you can buy upgrades that will lower this value to um, a more reasonable time. I say reasonable, an hour is still not bad. And what will happen is once you go through a cycle, an icon of a loot bag will appear in the bottom left-hand corner of the UI. If you click on that, it rolls for a chance to get an item from the floors that you're on. Each floor has different loot tables. Um, so depending on what you're trying to farm, you may want to aim for a particular floor. Now, um, the chance to get it is relatively low to begin with. However, there are items and buffs that you can buy that will increase that over time. The other thing to remember is whilst I have mentioned things like pristine charms in previous videos, 
and the fact you can buy them for blue gems you can actually farm them in here the chance i'm led to believe and this came from um hot air who's one of the the top mods in the in the community um is that there's about a one in two thousand chance of getting a pristine charm the pristine charms do huge buffs are definitely worth getting hold of um so you know you can target a, ro a room just to get that particular buff if you need it okay so the next thing to probably look at is the skill tree now i think this is probably one of the most balanced skill trees in the game and the reason is because sneaking has some very very clever mechanics about it that all kind of intertwine quite nicely so you're going to start off and you're going to have way of stealth and what this does is it gives you more stealth points per level that you have in sneaking okay stealth points are really really important they're going to help you early game and also you kind of need those base levels so all the multipliers grow into something huge so this is something that you're going to be focusing on a lot it's kind of like one of the main focal points of the skill in my opinion next we're going to get on to looting ambition and what this does is it increases your item find chance okay so the ability on any given floor to actually find an item now this is um <clears throat> a fantastic upgrade as i'm sure you'll you'll, you'll agree because you know you kind of need to be getting those new new items because that's where the the real good stuff um starts appearing but on top of that there's also a um alchemy bubble in the yellow path it's the second sort of penultimate one called ninja looter that will also increase your item find chance do not sleep on this bubble um it does take blue essence from summoning but between the two of them you'll be able to get your your um your item find chance relatively high which means the early early floors you'll be able to get items off fairly easily then you have currency conduit now what it's going to do is it's going to increase the amount of jade you get this is important if you're pushing the jade emporium and upgrades okay because every upgrade costs jade coins so you're going to need them and this is why i was saying by the skill is fairly well balanced in its skill tree there is also an alchemy bubble called low cost mo jade uh that uses royal jelly is it um it's the final one in the yellow uh, cauldron definitely worth leveling this up because it's going to drop the cost of currency conduit the highest i've seen is 92 percent, but i'm sure it can go higher than that um obviously a reduction in cost is going to mean your upgrades are way cheaper means you can get through sneak sneaking a lot quicker there's also respect for the art this is going to give you xp rate now XP rate isn't to be slept on either because remember your stealth skill, uh, your stealth num your stealth bonus is based around your uh, sneaking level. So you need to gain levels to get stealth. So you kind of need to be pushing in all kinds of directions. Next we go into way of haste, and what this is is that it makes all of your all of your cycles, as I call them, um, or they call it action speed, it makes each each cycle less time. Okay, so you know at fifty percent um sorry at 100 percent, i believe it, it cuts your cycle time down to 30 minutes or something like that so definitely don't sleep on this it's going to mean you get more actions done which means more items more jade means you can push a lot quicker <clears throat> now now we're getting into the one which i think you can probably ignore which is thick skin and what this means is when you get knocked out you're going to spend less time knocked out Okay, this might be useful if you're pushing floors a bit too early and trying to try your luck. However, I like to play safe in this mode. So I haven't really felt a massive benefit from this. Um, I'm sure it does help on the top floor. I've heard the, the detection rates are huge up there. Then we have Mahjong boosters. Now this is a massive one. This is gonna increase this, your damage and untying rate, which means you can break down doors and you can get new tunes quicker. This does have diminishing returns, and what I mean by that is there are only a certain number of floors, there's only a certain number of tunes. Once you have them all, this becomes less useful, but in order to get them, you might want to invest some time into it. Then we have uh, Star Sweeping. This is a fantastic one, and what, what it does is it allows you a free revive. So this is why I've not really had to use the fixed skin skill as much. And what you can do is you can buy, basically, mops from the ghost on the very, very first, on the ground floor. And then if your tune gets knocked out, you move it down into the ground floor, it gets an instant revive, and you can put it back into sneaking. This is worth leveling up, but it gets very, very expensive very, very quickly. So it is kind of one of those late game upgrades you're probably going to get hold of. 
Um, then we go into like sort of our, our item upgrade. So you've got Nunchaku Grip. This is going to increase the potential level for your nunchucks. So the higher the level, the more damage it's going to do on the doors. You're going to need this to push up. Okay, again, once you smash all the doors though, this becomes much less useful. Then we have Kunai Knowledge does the same thing, but for Kunais, the increased level on Kunais will help you to untie people quicker. Again, it's fantastic until you've got all the tunes, at which point it becomes relatively um, redundant. And the final one is Charm Collector. Now this one is huge. This increases the level, the potential level of charms that you find. Charms are the things that are going to really, really push your sneaking through the roof. So this is kind of one of those MVP ones that you want to be leveling up as high as you can. Um, when you reach certain milestones, the level will change color. So at level 50, I believe you get gold colored items. Um, huge. Definitely do not sleep on this, uh, this tree skill. Okay, now there are a ton of items that you can find during this. Some of them have different moods. Some of them have different reasons that you might want to use them. However, I'm going to point out the ones that you probably want to be farming to a decent level. So, on the um, on the second floor, uh, which is the very first floor you're going to unlock, <clears throat> you're going to unlock the bomb. What the bomb does is it gives a stealth bonus to all people on the same floor as the bomb wielder. The way you can actually do this is you can equip bombs to all of your tunes and everyone gets a huge bonus from it. Definitely something that is worth um, farming up. Uh, the next one you're going to look at is um, on the third floor, there's a meteor. This can be useful for when you're farming items. What it does is it removes all XP but gives you an increased item find chance. The item find chance is substantial. So if you're farming the lower tier ones as you start leveling up, say if you need to go back and get bombs, the Meteor is going to be a good friend because it's going to help you to get bombs quicker. Um, it's going to save you time. You're going to, you get barely any XP anyway at that point. So you're, you're probably going to want to waive your XP for increased drop rates. Um, in the fourth floor, you have an item called uh, Scroll of Power. This is a huge bonus. You can only equip one per tune, uh, one, one per account. Uh, so keep your highest one. And what this is going to do is it's going to increase Jade, XP, Stealth rates. Okay, so it's going to give you a buff on everything for that one tune. It's huge. It's really, really good for when you first get a tune to try and help their survivability, increase level them up quicker, and help with your Jade generation. So it's a fantastic one. Alongside that, on this level is also the Gold Coin. And what this is going to do is it's one of those inventory items I was talking about. It just increases your Jade Coins overall. So keep the highest one of this at all times. Do not sell your last one of that. You'll need the jade coin, uh, golden coin, sorry. Um, then in the fifth floor, you have a, um, what is that, golden eye. That's going to increase your sneaking XP. Again, it's an inventory item, so it's fantastic to have just for passive gains. And you've got another one of the MVP items in the silk veil. And what it does is it just straight up multiplies your stealth number. Okay, so... Um, my highest one that I currently have is at level 31 and it's giving five times total stealth. That, then when mixed with the bomb bonus from all of your other tunes, can get you up to phenomenal stealth numbers. Um, the floor above that, so we're now on the sixth floor, and it drops a gold coupon. What this does is it's going to decrease the cost of, it says golden knowledge. What that means is upgrades. Okay, upgrades in the skill tree will cost less. On the next floor, we've got gold scroll. What that will do is it increases the bonus of all charms. Okay, so this is huge because your... Silk Veils, your bombs, they count as charms, so you're going to be buffing them up even higher. This is definitely not something to sleep on. All right. The floors above that tend to be better just for your sort of kunais. Um, there is an item up there called the comb um, that will increase your... Give, all, give XP to the highest level member. Um, it's good if you're trying to level up someone in particular. However, it's a very niche kind of item. They're sort of the items I would be focusing on. They're the ones which I've used to push through the majority of the floors um, with relative ease. Obviously, you're going to be upgrading your kunai and nunchucks. Um, in terms of kunai and nunchucks, they are in a very, very simple pattern. 
The second floor has a nunchucks, third floor has a kunai, and they repeat. So the next floor will have nunchucks, next floor will then have kunai. All right, really, really simple to keep track of that. Okay, so with the update, we've now got three new floors and a bit of a shake up to the meta of the items you're gonna to do to push floors. So originally you were looking at bombs and veils. These can now be upgraded. So there is a lotus flower available on the leak floor. Uh, that's going to replace your bombs. So that's going to give you a similar sort of bonus to your um, stealth for all ninjas on the same floor. And we get rosaries, which are going to upgrade your silk veils. Now, they're on one of the new floors. It's a floor with a pillow monster on it. Um, I don't know the exact floor number yet. Uh, this information has come to me from Itsui's fantastic player. Um, and we now have a new weapon for the weapon slot in boxing gloves. And what these do is they drop the amount of time per cycle. So whereas before, if you had done all your doors and all your untying, your weapon slot kind of became redundant. Now we've got a weapon that is permanently as a passive buff. And the first time that you can get that is actually on the spy, uh, no, apologies, is actually on the book floor. Okay, so it's one of the previous floors. They've added it to it, which is a nice little update. Okay, so three new items you want to look out for. They're a bit more towards the higher end of the game, so a bit more into the end game sort of tier of sneaking, but uh, Bombs and Veils is going to get you so far. Then look to upgrade to rosary, Rosaries, um, Lotus Flowers, and Boxing Gloves. We've also got a new golden, um, golden item available, which is the Golden Dagger. You can find it on the spider floor. And what this is going to do is increase your nunchuck damage, okay? So it's a straight up damage to break down doors. You're going to need this for those new floors because the new floors have much higher HP. Okay, now I've mentioned one other thing in this video, which is pristine charms. These are huge and give account buffs, depending on how many you find. So um, they give things like, I'll, I'll list them off so you can see them. I'll also put them on screen. So you've got 1.2 times total damage. 20% extra agility. 1.4 times artifact find chance. Um, this might not be so useful if you finish sailing. However, if you're still going through sailing, that's a huge increase. 1.15 times drop rate. That's multiplicative. So it's not just a 1.15 increase. It takes whatever you've got. So say if you had a drop rate of 10, it would then multiply that through by 1.15 times, um, which should be 11.16 or something like that. Um, it's a lovely upgrade. Definitely worth getting hold of. Sugar Bomb is going to give you 20% strength. Gum Eye is going to give you 20% luck. Uh, Bubble Gum Law is going to give you 1.25 kill per kill, which means opening up portals is going to be easier. World 6 portals needs a lot, so this is a great help. Uh, you then get Sour Wowzer, 50% uh, sneaking XP. Crystal Comb, which is going to give you 1.3 times bigger summoning winning bonuses. The summoning bonuses rewards are huge, so getting 0.3 times more multiplicative is a massive buff. Um, Rock Candy, which is going to give 50% extra farming XP. Lollipop Lore, which is going to be 20% Wisdom. So you can see all your base stats you can get a 20% buff to. Taffy Disc, which is 1.5 times higher Overgrowth Chance. Stick of Chew, which is 1.3 times all Essence Generation. So again, more Essence for summoning. You'll need so much of that. And the last one is Treat Sack, which gives you 1.4 times Jade Coin Gain. With the update came four new Pristine Charms. They do some pretty incredible things. So the first one is, uh, we'll say 25% printer output. That's huge. It means your samples are going to do even more, which means even more atoms. Uh, 1.4 times money from monsters. Again, it's a multiplicative bonus, so it's a big bonus to money. 50% um, increase the golden food bonus with the beanstalk golden food bonus has become even more important. So this is huge. And then the final one, which is probably my favourite, which is 1.25 times bigger bonuses on non-miscellaneous stamps. Okay, that means every single stamp apart from the final tab is going to be 25% better than what you had it before. That's going to buff your account in so many ways, it's unreal. These pristine charms are fantastic. Also, a little bit of information that dropped with this is that whereas I said before that you could get particular pristine charms on a specific map, that isn't true. You can actually get any pristine charm on any map. So you can go and farm the easiest map for the highest drop rate charms and get your pristine charms there if you wish. Okay, now I've mentioned the final unlock with uh, 
with my tips and tricks video. The final thing is the Jade Emporium. Why is it so powerful? And the answer is because it gives you everything. Okay, the first thing it unlocks is going to unlock quick reference for sneaking. Okay, it, it's not a huge thing, but it is useful because you're going to want to check your drops quite often. Obviously, if your cycle time gets low, you're going to want to check it while you're active farming. You don't want to have to go back to town to check these things. The next thing is it's going to give you an expansion on the MS Miniature Soul Apparatus in World 3. It's going to give you farming XP. Okay, so similar to the previous ones where it gives damage and all of that kind of thing, it's going to give you farming XP, which is going to help you to level up your farming quicker. You're probably going to need that, okay, because at the end of the day, there's skill mastery to attach that. The third bonus is level exemption. This is going to remove all bonus reductions from stamps. This is a huge thing. Previously, you'd have to level up your skills to unlock full potential of stamps. That is gone. Okay, the fourth bonus, again, depends on whether you finish sailing. If you haven't, it's going to increase your artifact uh, fine chance. If you have, it might be less useful. Although there is talk in the works of a potential artifact um, update coming, a new level called Sovereign Artifact. So this may become very useful. The fifth upgrade is Crop Depot Scientist. And what this does is it's basically... Um, MSA 2.0, okay? You're gonna unlock new buffs in there. So the next one is a buff for that scientist. It's gonna give you 20% total damage per crop that you've unlocked. There's, I've seen people up to 99 crops, which is a ton of extra damage. Basically another Equinox damage buff, and Equinox was phenomenal for damage. The next thing is gonna be a slab increase, so you get essence based around how many slab items you found. Um, and then the next one is probably one of my favorite ones, which is the golden food beanstalk. And what this does is if you've got 10,000 of any particular golden food, you can drop it on there and it will become a passive buff. This means you can double stack gold food because if you put 10,000 on the beanstalk and wear some, you're going to get the buff of the beanstalk and the buff of the personal. Huge update. Um, then we get uh, jade coin magnetism. It's a slab buff for jade coins. Works the same as all other slab buffs. And then we unlock um, a new update for the science pen. Uh, and what this does is it goes plant evolution chance gets included to your data sheet. So every crop you get is going to increase your chance to find the next crop. It's multiplicative, so it's a huge buff. The next one is going to be a quality of life update. People have been asking for a long time, which is that your shrines no longer lose XP when you move them. Okay. This is a huge bonus because you're probably gonna move your shrines into world six now because everyone's active there. You can now move them without losing all the XP you've already gained. So massive, massive quality of life update. Then we get science marker, adds jade coin gain to the data scientist. So again, per crop, you're gonna get more jade coins, massive. Um, and then we get jade coin gain added to the MSA. So MSA expander two is gonna do that. We have something that um, works on the theory of no bubble left behind. It's called no mill left behind. Okay, It's going to increase your mill level, every, your lowest mill level every day by one level. Um, this is really, really good if you're sort of at those really, really ridiculously high levels where it's taking days, if not weeks, to get enough ladles together to actually upgrade. Then we get Science Feather Pen. It's another data science one. It increases your cooking speed. Revenge of the Pickle. This is a nice little thing. So this is the death note that works on mini bosses. I've mentioned in a previous video, make sure you're buying your Bone Joe pickles every day from the World 6 shop because they're going to be used here. Next upgrade increases the um, slab, no, increases lab. So what this will do is you will actually have a new node added to the lab and it will increase your slab bonuses. So I think it increases by 1.25. It's a big buff. Then we have a cash buff based on the data sheet. Cash, there's so many sources of it now, you've probably farmed green uh, G mush by now. Next buff is going to be another expander for the MSA. Okay, this one's going to give you essence gain. Huge, huge thing. And then we go on to even higher mill levels. So before the top mill level was 60, you're adding 10 more to it. So you can go up to 70 now. Bigger buffs, even more power. <clears throat> Next one's going to be Science Crayon. That adds um, shiny pet level rate up and breeding pet rate up. Um, to per crop shiny pet level is one you're looking for it's a really really long grind to do that anything that will speed that up is fantastic and then we can upgrade the beanstalk we can now put stacks of a hundred thousand gold items in there for a passive boost okay remember some of these foods you're never going to use so they are just free stats things like the extra defense the extra health 
Um, the next buff is uh, Charmed, I'm sure. This allows your twin, your ninja twin, to equip two of the same charm. Now, we've tested this. Oh, I've spoken to people who have tested this. Running two bombs isn't any better than running a bomb in a silver veil. Running two silver veils is the same. It seems as though the buffs are additive when they're the same, but multiplicative when they're the opposite. So they work better in tandem. Next one's Deal Sweetening. Earn 25% more magic beans from the Legumu Light. Mentioned him in the farming video, so 25% more beans is just a straight up buff. Then we're going to expand the lab again with another node. This time it's going to give you a boost to all world 6 skill XP. Fantastic buff. Then we're going to add another buff to the lab. So you've got four new nodes being added with this skill. This one increases all crop depot bonuses. The next one is gaming to the max. Depending on where you are with gaming, you may not care too much about it. It's going to increase the maximum amount of plant evolutions by one, which means you can get tier eight plants. That is the highest that is available in the logbook at the moment. I believe it's out of 72, which is eight times nine. So it is the final stage that we have seen so far. Whether Lava adds one later on, we don't know, but this seems to be the final unlock. 50 times rarer than normal though. So this is going to take a long time to get tier eight. So if you try to get in tier sevens, you know how hard they are. This might be one that you're not overly worried about. The final one is to increase the cooking level by 10 more. That means your cooking levels can go up to a maximum of 80. It's huge. Okay, again, more stats, more buffs, more power. All right, cooking is a huge skill and it works in the background. It's passive. So this is fantastic. Jade Emporium also got some love. These are very, very expensive. So if you're not end game, then uh, good luck getting to them. But, you know, it's something to aim for. People are saying this is months, if not years worth of content. So... The first upgrade is going to be Sovereign Artifacts. This increases your artifact level by one more. So whereas before all bonuses were tripled at Eldritch, they can now be quadrupled at Sovereign. Next, we've got Brighter Lighthouse. This is going to add three artifacts to the edge. Those artifacts are huge. The first one increases Onyx Statue bonuses by 2.3 times. So that's 230% extra bonuses from statues. And this bonus can be doubled, tripled, and quadrupled at sovereign level so it's huge the next one is going to be uh, the next artifact gives shimmer bonuses uh, again so the first one is times two which means that now your maximum per week would be an 80 shimmer bonus okay this can be doubled tripled and quadrupled which means that at top you're going to have it at what what's that work out as so double is going to be 160 triple is going to be 240 quadruple is going to be 320 so you can get 320 at top that's pretty big i'm assuming it's 320 if it doubles like that we'll wait and see um either way shimmer bonuses are now going to be huge the final artifact is summoning winning bonuses are 1.25 times higher summoning bonuses are very very important with the attack bonus you can get seven times attack in there at max level at the moment there's going to be more summoning coming so it's only going to get better an extra 25% bonus on top of that. Again, huge number of stats there. So definitely worth looking into. Uh, the next Emporium upgrade is going to be bribes. Mr. Pig Piggy Bank is getting new bribes. They are locked pretty far into it. But the bribes are amazing, especially considering they only cost coins. The first one's going to be Artifact Pilfering. That's going to give you a 20% increase to Artifact look Find Chance. A with the new Sovereign Artifacts, this is very much needed because, again, Artifacts are now becoming even harder to get hold of. The next bribe, Forge Cap Smuggling. This is going to boost your Forge Capacity by 1.3 times. Forge Capacity is huge. This is going to really, really help with those God Bars and the amount you need, which is a phenomenal amount at the minute. Every buff is going to be great on that. Gold from Lead. Boost Gold Food Bonuses by 10%. Another increase to those Gold Food Bonuses. As I say, massive bonus to Beanstalk, which is becoming super important. Then we get Nugget Fabrication. Increases shovel rate um, of nuggets in gaming by 20%. So you're going to get more nuggets, which means a bigger multiplier for gaming, which means you can buy those super bits that little bit easier. Then we get divine points miscounting, an extra 30% to uh, divinity points. If you're leveling up divinity, god ranks, maybe this is important. It's a it's a really really niche thing. I'm I'm it, it's a it's a nice bonus. Okay, divinity points. We need a lot of them. I don't know how useful it is because I'm kind of done with Divinity. I'm not really too worried about God Ranks, but maybe we'll look to use it because it is a bonus to damage with your Elemental Sorcerer. The final bribe is Loot Table Tampering, and this one's a huge one. Random event bosses are 1.2 times more likely to drop items. 
Okay, it's a straight up multiplicative bonus. Random events are horrible to farm. However, things like uh, the Knight Obel are best in slot for drop rate. So this is a huge bonus. Maybe you can get more of that. Um, after that, we get a new critter, which is the Turtle. The Turtle has a phenomenal vial attached to it. Okay, so it's an it's a, um, alchemy vial attached to it. With it, it gives a bonus to many, many things. Okay, so it gives a bonus to artifact find. All right, sigil speed, cooking speed, and construction build rate. 15% per rank, and it's multiplicative. So this increases everything on your account again, because cooking speed boosts everything. Sigils are huge now, because there's a fourth level added to them. Um, you know, there's, there's some really, really good bonuses here. Next one's going to be those ionized sigils. This is what I was talking about. Um, sorry, a third a third level to sigils. So whereas before they would stop at yellow, uh, there's now a further color to them. I don't know what the color is yet, but again, huge bonus to sigils. Some of those are extremely powerful, such as your liquid generation rates, um, kitchen, um, kitchen cost reductions, things like that. Then we get science paintbrush. This is going to add base critter um, caught in trapping per crop. More critters. That means you can get those vials maxed out even quicker if you need to. Fantastic. Ender Captain. Here's the thing that's a bit more interesting. And it shakes up the way that your sailing is going to work. So the Ender Captain looks like a king. He wears a crown. There was a sneak peek to it in the Discord, re the main Discord recently. They're super rare. They come with their own stats, like a normal captain. They're not level locked like a normal captain, but they also have a hidden account wide 25% loot multi and artifact find. Okay, so when you're trying to find those new artifacts, you might be worth stacking up ender captains just to try and get those artifact find chance increases. Okay, fantastic, because this means whereas before captains could only have two stats, they now basically have four stats. They're always going to have an extra loot stat and an extra artifact stat. This means with the loot multiplier, for example, the highest multiplier you can get on a captain at the moment is something like 62, I think 62 or 64% loot chance in each slot. If you were to roll a 42% loot chance with that loot multiplier, you are now at higher than the maximum. Okay, which means that you don't need to get necessarily the optimum captains. This will help push things up even higher. The final Emporium buff we get is Laboratory Bling. It adds new free new jewels to the laboratory. These seem to be based off of your total lab level. So for every 700 levels, you will unlock one, which means at mastery at Rift Mastery 2100, you will have all three jewels. Now, it does say that they're um, unlocked at the jewel spinner. We don't know how this is going to work. I don't know if it's a weekly. Maybe you can buy them. We're not really sure yet because people haven't seen them. Now, the jewels, what do they do? Okay, so the three new jewels. We get a pure opal rhinestone. This is going to give slab sovereignty, and this gives an additional 32% boost to all slab bonuses. Slab bonus is a huge 32% boost to it, massive. That's free, that's one third extra to your slab boost at the moment. All right. Um, it does say 32%, so I'm going to assume this isn't multiplicative, but we'll wait and see. Uh, I mind you saying that 32% on all most likely is multiplicative. Ignore that. I'm going to assume this is a multiplicative bonus. Pure Opal Nevet is the next jewel. 16% higher effects from all active bonuses and jewels within the main frame. Okay, so this is just going to buff every single buff already in lab. Lab's already super important. This is one of those bonuses that has 80 pixel connection range, so you're going to have to sit a tune right next to it. Um, depending on where this sits in the map will depend how annoying this is. If you've got do, don't worry about it. The final jewel is Pure Opal Rumble. This is going to unlock Depot Studies PhD, and this is going to give an additional boost to all Crop Depot bonuses. I'm going to assume this is going to work similar to the Slab bonus from Slab Sovereignty, however, just affect Crop, de crop Depot, because Crop Depot is basically Slab 2.0. So we're going to I'm going to assume that's a multiplicative bonus on there. I don't have any numbers for what they are yet. Um, this has obviously all been data mined and provided to me, um, Itsui is the one who've made me aware of it. So again, massive hey, thank so you So I guess him. I owe you guys an apology. This video turned out to be way longer than I'd ever anticipated. It's just the way it is, with the way sneaking and a new update drop the day I was about to release the video. I also want to say a massive thank you to Itsui and Zoro, two guildmates who I literally could not make this content without at the moment. 
They are pushing forward through content, gathering information at a rate that is unheard of, and sharing it with me in a way that I can bring it to you guys. So massive, massive thanks to them. So I think that's all I got for you today. If you found this video useful in any way, shape or form, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. I love hearing from you guys. Also, feel free to join the Discord. It's a great group of people. It's a growing community and we'd love to have you aboard. As always, thanks for watching. You've been amazing. Take care.